goodness. Oh, ah, 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 mighty God. Human beings are the only intelligent species today. Our intelligence has kept us alive in an environment that is hostile to life by nature. And we will continue to thrive in this environment for many more thousands of years. But it seems that our future as a species does not depend so much on the process of natural selection anymore. We have developed civilizations, sciences, and technologies that for the first time in history enable us to manipulate our own nature. Far from the mechanisms that gave rise to our existence as a species, beyond the detailed developments that have brought us to our current stage of being, it is ourselves, mankind, who have the frightening option of deciding the destiny of our species. skull, strong projecting cheekbones, a high forehead, a long narrow nose. This was what Cro-Magnon man looked like. He arrived in Europe between 50 and 100,000 years ago. He came from Africa. If we could bring one of them into the present, after teaching him all our knowledge and dressing him in our clothes, nobody would realize that he was a prehistoric man. Today, human beings are not so different from Cro-Magnons. We use language, we have burial rites, we make useful objects and symbols, and we have complex belief systems we carry practically all of the very same genes. Making chiseled strokes in stone and writing on a keyboard are really just different stages in the same process. But what about 500 centuries from now? Would our presence among our future descendants go unnoticed as well? Natural evolution mechanisms need long periods of time to be effective. In the last 100,000 years, we have changed very little, but all of that could change overnight. Our cultures, our sciences, and our technology have altered the process of natural selection. In biological terms, survival is not reserved exclusively for the strongest. Our genes do not evolve towards differentiation. On the contrary, progress in communications has generated a constant crossbreeding of human beings with different origins. With every passing day, we are growing more and more similar to one another. Nature seems to have finished its work on us. And yet, evolution continues. Until uh, a few thousand years ago, evolution was governed exclusively by natural selection, including the early evolution of mankind. But now that we have acquired this uh, very remarkable brain and have used this brain to study and to do research and to try to understand, now that we have achieved a considerable degree of understanding of life, now that with the help of this knowledge we have built extremely powerful techniques to manipulate life, 
now that we cover the world with our own, uh, well, first of all, with <laughs> human beings, and also with our industries, with our uh, agriculture, with all our activities, we have become the main, uh, we have acquired the main responsibility for the future of life. Natural selection is still working, but basically we have in our hands the future of life, and this is a, a tremendous responsibility. It seems as if nature has given us intelligence so as to abandon us all alone face to face with the future. We have the means to genetically alter our own cells. We can duplicate human beings. We can make them taller, more handsome, or more intelligent. If such changes depended on natural selection, it would take a million years before the first results would appear. But we have the control, and we are able to change a person's traits even before he or she is born. Perhaps we could take a walk and go unnoticed in the world of 400 centuries in the future, but it might also be possible that our future descendants would find us as different from them as we would find the hominids who lived a million years ago. The fact is, we have the capacity to change. We simply have to decide if we want to. Everything depends on the interactions between these 100 billion neurons in the human brain, where intelligence seems to be located. Right now, there are more than 6 billion brains at work all over the planet. But each one of them is a world unto itself. However, at the same time, all of them are interconnected to the same network. They can communicate among themselves and become empowered by a common heritage. The human brain is where the yearning for survival is nurtured, where the curiosity that drives us to continue to develop and progress, to develop our creative abilities, is nurtured. This mass of neurons defines us as a species, even though in a physical or biological sense, it doesn't seem so different from the brain of an ape, our nearest relative. It is not even clear um, what are the differences. It's clearly, again, our cortex is much more developed than the cortex of the apes, the neocortex. But very likely, the difference is essentially a quantitative difference. It's not that we have something different from the apes. It's that we have more of the same. Okay, We have more neurons. We have more of neocortex. So we can do more things, more complex things than the ape can. But the basic tools, the basic pieces, they are the same. I don't think there are basic differences. The development of the human brain was basically the result of the manual activities performed by early hominids. The brain facilitates the planning of actions, which serve in turn as methods of learning.